sure you understand you know anything that you can get rich quickly that you don't understand mm -hmm. you know you can also get poor quickly Good. there's a there's a there's a good saying that it's a wall street saying that uh, you know what the smart do in the beginning the dumb do in the end Gray and this is another episode of the Gray App Podcast and the year is almost over guys can you believe it uh, it's been a long year that feels so short and I hope you guys uh, so far has managed to hit your targets and if you haven't you still got you know uh, a couple of days to, to make it happen a couple of weeks so I wish you good luck with that and if you're listening to the Gray App Podcast for the first time this is a show where I interview people with skin in the game. So we talk about business, technology, finance, relationships, all sorts of things uh, that you would consider important and useful uh, in your life. Uh, but the key point is we learn them from people who are actually out there doing it. So we, he we hear it from the horse's mouth. Uh, so if you are a subscriber thank you for being a uh, part of this community for a long time and if you're not obviously you can join us by subscribing to the podcast on spotify on itunes or on my website greatjabesa.com and on any other podcasting platforms and today we have another exciting guest by the name of steve nathan if you are in south africa i'm sure you're familiar with steve somehow uh, or you might be familiar with his company 10x investments in which he's the CEO and founder or if you're not familiar probably you have seen uh, that 10x building if you're uh, driving towards Sea Point on Somerset Road in Greenpoint uh, there is that building with the 10x on it that is uh, Steve's company and that's where they are actually uh, residing so I actually uh, went and recorded this podcast at its office and it was awesome you know uh, meeting some of the team a large team in there you know everybody getting busy getting things done it was very uh, it was very interesting for me I didn't know that you know uh, that's how these investment firms operate from the inside it's really really looks like hard work and to quote biznews.com Steve Nathan is on a mission 10 years after the JC's top rated investment analyst swapped number crunching for a disruptive dream, his 10x investment is managing retirement funds worth 8 billion rand on behalf of 150 companies. And for those of you familiar with the US dollar, that's about 558 million dollars, at least from the time that I'm recording this. South African asset managers might not operate a classical cartel but their price of price clustering has the same effect. The international practice of money managers dropping fees as their asset base grows has not been adopted in South Africa. As a result, the mushrooming of the savings industry has simply added to the profits of the managers, with South African investors paying among the highest fees on earth. Wow. Nathan is determined to disrupt this cozy arrangement. So this was, you know, interesting for me uh, in a lot of ways. I learned a lot about uh, investing, especially if you consider the fact that uh, when we talk about investing or retirement uh, specifically, you know, the, the experts or professionals make it seem like it's something that we cannot understand and we should just get, leave it in their hands and, you know, let them run with it. And then they charge us too much fees and there's not even transparency in it. So 10x investments came in to solve some of these problems and the inspiration for Steve to start 10x reminds me of that of Scott Pickett in episode 81 if you haven't listened to it already, uh, the real estate investor. Uh, he has a personal story to it and then he built his company and Steve just had I think uh, the passion to help a lot of investors, you know, building a, a company that will keep, um, will be in favor of the investor uh, so you know, 10x started from there so we discussed a lot of things uh, you know obviously his inspiration for for 10x and uh, what they invest in and I also asked him about his thoughts on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency 
So this was a blast to me and you know, highly, highly appreciated. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as well. And remember, feel free to tag me in the post when you're sharing this on Twitter. And for Steve, you can um, contact him if you want via Twitter as well. He's at Steven 10 x and the company 10x Investments is at 10x Investments. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Steve. <clears throat> okay, so I think uh, we can start with the, the history. Are you on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I've read, you know, I think the inspiration for you starting this place was that uh, the retirement aspect. Uh, that's one of, on your interviews, that's one of the things that you talk about a lot. Uh, so maybe just give us a, a background or maybe an introduction of yourself first and 10x investments and what made you start the, the company itself. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, so, um, you know, I started off uh, when I was at school. I've always been very interested in financial markets, investments. How does uh, the stock market work? How does money work? Uh, and uh, I studied uh, chartered accountancy, so I did a CA route. Uh, but while I was doing my articles, I started to study the CFA, the investment uh, qualification. So that's always the route I wanted to go. And uh, when I finished articles, I joined a stockbroker uh, on the JSC and uh, they said, we want you to analyze the financial services sector. So we actually want you to analyze the banks, the life companies, the asset managers. Uh, and that was quite an interesting uh, area because I'd studied the, the profession of investing. So uh, how to be a good, uh, uh, investor, a good steward of other people's money, but when I saw the business of investing, it was uh, worlds apart. It really right. hit me in the face like, wow, what's going on over here? Because uh, believe it or not, you actually do have a investment profession and you have things called the Financial Analyst Journal, which is like the medical journal. Mm -hmm. um, but when you come into the business of investing, it's almost as if they they throw up, uh, they throw away all those books, they tear them, they burn them, they ignore them. Most people have never even heard of the Financial Analyst Journal. Most financial advisors have never even read one article in the Financial Analyst Journal. So, so for me, it was a, a, an enormous uh, shock where I saw that uh, uh, the business of investing is very much that, it's a business. It's not necessarily there to look after the client's interest. Uh, and sadly, most people, when they invest their retirement savings or any other savings, they, they presume that uh, the financial advisor or the company has their best interest at heart, more or less as if I go to a doctor, I don't think the doctor is going to look at me as a commercial opportunity and say, well, how much money can I make and mm -hmm. what medication can I prescribe that's going to be best for me? You just think that they're going to they're look after you. So it was really seeing the investment industry from the inside and seeing how these companies structure the products, uh, the complexity of the products, the high fees of the products the underperformance of most asset managers. And when you understand the long-term impact uh, of that, you see that uh, most people saving for retirement are gonna get a very bad deal. And that was the primary motivation for starting 10X, is to say, so I know how uh, people should be invested, and uh, we wanna start a company that, uh, that helps people to get better value for their retirement savings and helps them to retire with dignity. That's the whole, uh, premise and background to right. my story and obviously the 10x story right so that's interesting what you said about you know when it comes to investing traditionally people think that they're you know the companies on the financial institutions are working in their interest when they're actually a business but you know it's never advertising that way whereas you know yeah whether they're mean, banks it's, it's, or you know investing is been made incredibly complex mm -hmm. and sadly the industry has made it more and more complex by launching more and more products by the so-called innovation where they say oh, all of a sudden we've worked out a new way to manage money better or to try and beat the market we're using quantitative we're using index funds we're using smart beta funds we're using factor investing blah mm. blah 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 and the reality is that it's all rubbish it's all nonsense it's all factually uh, untrue and it's all principles that have not been proven because the basics of investing have been formed 50 years ago so so there's some simple principles of how to invest well mm -hmm. and there's lots of principles well, not even principles but there's lots of practices on how to do badly and the sad reality is that uh, 
you know, 90% of what the industry does in aggregate destroys value for people, but it, uh, it helps the companies to do well. I mean, mm. in South Africa, we have a statistic which has been around for 30 years, which says that 94% uh, of South Africans fail to retire with enough money. And 30 years later, the, st the, the statistic is 94% fail to retire. So, so it's only 6% are going to Only 6% are adequate. And uh, so it just shows you that the industry in aggregate has not made any incremental improvement in helping people achieve better outcomes at retirement. And that's, you know, it just shows you that uh, the industry uh, doesn't matter what they say or do, the results show that, uh, that they are ineffectual. But mm -hmm. We know that most people in the industry do very well. If you look at most financial advisors and most asset managers, they actually earn very good incomes and they have very good lifestyles. But sadly, they're doing that at the expense of people who are retiring poor. Right. So there are people who have said uh, that, well, investing to begin with, you, it's something that you have to take responsibility for yourself instead of just handling it to someone entirely and rely that, you know, expect that they will do good for you. What is your philosophy on like personal finance first? Uh, when should someone actually consider going to, into an invest, investment firm and say, look, I want you to manage my money from now on? Uh, what due diligence must they do on their own? Yeah, so you're right that uh, society and be it you know, our school education, our university education, the government, uh, the media, uh, whoever should inform us and educate us has not done a particularly good job yeah because uh, you know we even today my children go to life orientation and they have all these uh, wonderful you know uh, classes about social media and right. what not to do and what not to say but sadly no one ever talks about finance <laughs> they never talk about money yes and uh, you know money is going to be an incredibly important part of our lives uh, and we need to we need to have some basic principles so even things like like budgeting you know, living within our means. I mean, people make so many financial mistakes. In fact, I would say that uh, uh, the financial services industry, be it banks, uh, life insurance companies, asset managers, retirement fund companies, they mostly are profiting on people's ignorance and people's fears and uh, people being uninformed mm -hmm. and making bad decisions. Because a bad decision for them is a good decision for you. I'll give an example. I mean, if you, uh, you know, if you say, uh, let's say you want to buy a TV and the TV is, let's say, 10,000 Rand. Okay? Right. Uh, so if you save 1,000 Rand for 10 months, then 10 months later you can buy the TV and you pay your 10,000 Rand and you're done. Mm -hmm. uh, but most people, what they will do is they'll probably buy a TV on credit uh, or they'll get an unsecured loan. Uh, and that TV, once you buy on credit, then these companies add in credit life insurance and they... Uh, they add in their finance charges and your TV costs you more than double. Right. So, so, so you end up paying double for something. What could you have done? You could have waited a few months, saved a bit, uh, and then you know, use that other 10,000 Rand to invest or to do something more productive. Mm -hmm. uh, so people, you know, people just make so many mistakes. If you look at, as I say, you know, furniture retailers, a lot of the banks, the unsecured lenders, the life insurance industry, Sadly, they are all benefiting from people's ignorance. And, you know, uh, an industry is not really going to reform itself because if they're right. making great uh, profits, profits and super margins and having a wonderful life, well, certainly they haven't shown any, uh, any ability or any trend to do that. So, so someone else has got to disrupt the industry, be it, uh, you know, new, new companies like Tanex doing things uh, better and simpler and a uh, uh, lot more transparently. But on its own, it's not going to work. People have to take responsibility and people mm -hmm. have got to wake up and take charge. So rather than having, you know, the starting point of most people is that uh, I'm going with XYZ because they're a reputable company, they're big, they're listed. They're so so you know, th that is a very, very big thing because uh, if an average person there is trying to invest, they're just going to look at the big names. You yeah, know, so with, without so even paying attention to the do. numbers. I mean, I am amazed that people still buy mm. uh, investment products through life companies. If you do any research on life companies in South Africa, you will see that uh, they have uh, decimated uh, millions of people's of lives. Mm. Why? Because for example, on retirement annuities, which is the single biggest uh, investment uh, product for individual saving for retirement, uh, is that uh, the termination penalties they've charged, we, 
you sign up for 30 years on a life contract that most people don't even understand what they're signing and yeah. after five or six years you can't pay that contribution and you change your contribution rate or you stop paying they took away most of your money uh you know so a lot of these products have been designed uh, they've, they've been designed to fail. doesn't matter how much you're saving, mm. uh, for most people the charges and the inflexibility and the termination penalties are going to wipe away your wealth. Um, but people should know this because what has changed today, let's say from 10 years ago, when I started 10X uh, 10 years ago, uh, I don't think the iPhone was there yet, I don't think Facebook, anyone knew about Facebook, there was no mm. social media, Google was in its infancy, so it's very diff difficult to find the truth. So right. you had to say to an advisor or a company, tell me the truth or tell me what you think. And they wouldn't give you the truth. They would give you their, their vested interest. Yes. Whereas today, you know, we have Google. Uh, it's, so, it's so easy to find the truth out. And 10 years ago, it was hard to find the truth out. So, you know, people have just got to take more of an interest and they have to realize there's a crisis because sadly people only get uh, uh, motivated or spurred into action when there's a crisis, which is sorting Cape Town with the water. Yes. So most of us did nothing until we heard day zero was coming and we're going to have to go down the road with our buckets and yeah. we said, okay, hang on, we better, we, better, we better change our behavior. And that's quite simply what people need to understand with their, with their finances, be it their budgeting, be it their, uh, the credit that they take. I mean, we're a country that lives on way too much credit. The, yes. government, the government itself is not setting a very good example. Um, and your and 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 your finances and the the thing is that it's actually quite easy to do. Uh, yes, it's a little bit daunting to get started, but once you read a few articles on the internet, you'll work out that a lot of the jargon is actually there not to help you or to mm -hmm. empower you. It's there to confuse you, and it's there to make you putty in you know in someone's hands. And you know if you look at retirement, I mean, I say to people and and. I'm not talking about people that haven't got a high level of education or income. I'm talking to highly educated people uh, across the board. And you say, where is your retirement savings invested? They have no idea. They might say, oh, it's with XYZ company. But I say, well, XYZ company has 50 portfolios and they've all got different returns. Where, where is it invested? Mm -hmm. So most people have got no idea where their money is invested. They've got no idea whether they're doing well or badly against the market and they have no idea what fees are. Mm -hmm. If you don't know where you where your money is invested and the fees you're paying, well, you're flying blind. And when you're flying blind, you're not really gonna do very well. And also what's remarkable with the retirement fund industry is that uh, uh, the industry never invoices anyone. Uh, you know, we get an invoice for our cell phone, we get an mm. invoice for electricity, we go to uh, pick and pay and we get an invoice for yes. groceries. I mean, we know what everything costs us, you know, we kind of watch it and, and uh, the asset management industry, the retirement industry never ever invoices you. They take the money when they want, what they want, yeah. and, and people got no idea. They have, just have no idea. So you've got to say, in a system like that, uh, do you think that uh, you know, you're going to get a great deal or do you think you're going you to get ripped trust off? It's going to be a breeze. Exactly. Yeah. And once again, look at the track record. Look at how many fines the financial services industry pays. You know, this is not an industry that can say, like, listen, Trust us because uh, you know we've always been great. Ask people who've had policies with retirement fund mm. life insurance companies. I mean, they've done pathetic people. I did a podcast with Scott Picken. You probably know him. Uh, he yeah, with Wealth Migrate. He's the CEO of Wealth Migrate. So he started a um, a fund in the real estate market simply because his father, uh, who was a hardworking person, you know, got messed up by the uh, retirement industry. You know, they promised him huge returns and in the end he ended up having no money at all but he worked his whole life the same thing happened to my mother mm. I mean, she was very hard working she had a, a a pension fund that she preserved and she invested with a life company and uh, uh, her fund did pathetic it, 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 was, it, was, it was abysmal and when i did some research into it what had happened is that uh, they had sold her uh, what's called a smooth bonus fund so she put like let's say 100 rand in but the fund actually was underwater mm. so they only gave her value for 80 rand so when the stock market uh, grew she still had to make up 25 percent just to break even oh, which wow. i would say is illegal unlawful immoral call it what you want it was, it was, it was one of the biggest life companies in south africa mm. and this is the kind of stuff they get away with and it's just uh, uh, it's criminal it really is i think that you know the uh, financial institutions get away with a lot, um, more, way more than the, the clients here in South Africa, because if you fail to make your payments, you're in deep trouble here. But then if they fail, you can't even sue them. I don't think you no, would. That's right. And also, 
you know, the worst, one of the worst things with the, the retirement industry and the investment industry is that they have your money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if they don't like something or they want to charge you, they They're just going to do it, yeah. And, uh, you know, the remarkable thing is that uh, uh, the legislation will say things like, yes, you know, you've got to treat customers fairly, and yes, you know, they should know what's going on, and yes, you should have transparency. But I can tell you that the life insurance industry has no transparency mm. uh, or, or incredibly limited transparency. And in certain instances, they have, they have uh, misleading disclosure. And what does the regulator do? Nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people say, yes, but it's, it's, surely it's regulated and surely I'm protected. Uh, you might be protected, let's say, from a complete Ponzi scheme. Yeah. But uh, you know, when you're saving for 30 or 40 years, you know, what people don't realize is that uh, 1% is a big deal. Because if I can, if I'm saving for 40 years and I can earn an extra 1% on my money compounded over 40 years, actually will mean 50% more money. Yes. And that's the problem with this industry is it's the half a percent here, the 1% there, that you never see in any one year. Because if you look at one year and you say, well, I've got 150,000 and I should have had 155,000. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like a big deal. But the compounded impact means that uh, you could have half or double your money over 30 or 40 years. Right. And that's really, you know, why we're saving, for example, for retirement. So when I retire one day in my 60s, you know, I want to have an adequate uh, pension pot that I can live off. And the reality is, as we've said, you know, most Africans don't have an adequate pension mm. pot to live off. Uh, it is true that uh, we're not the best savers in the world, but but neither are Americans and you know, a lot of people aren't very good savers, but they do way better than we do because just the, you know, the incredibly high charges and the complexity of the products work against people. So you have been fascinated with this industry since you were uh, younger, like you said, but then why haven't you retired yet? <laughs> well, I haven't, well, I haven't retired because uh, I'm passionate about uh, helping other people. Oh, okay. uh, I mean, uh, you know, I say to people, listen, if I wanted to, uh, to retire, I was working at one of the biggest investment banks globally. I was a managing mm-hmm. director there. I was earning, you know, huge uh, salaries every year and bonuses. Uh, so if I was in it for the money, I'd still be there, or I could have retired, or could have started a hedge fund, which some of my friends have done. Mm. Uh, I mean, the sad thing is that uh, the financial services industry is a way overpaid. People earn far too much for their abilities and their value add. I would say it's. I mean, I can't think of any industry in the world that is that is more overpaid for very average and often unqualified people that are not adding value. So, mm-hmm. but, so if I wanted to wear, say, if uh, my motivation was to accumulate as much money for myself, there's, 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 there's a lot of easy ways to do that. But uh, what drives me is to, is to help people to, to get, uh, as I say, to retire with dignity, just to, just to do better for themselves. Uh, hopefully we're gonna build a big business and we wanna build a big business because we do have a commercial mindset but also because uh, if we build a big business, it means we impact a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So kind of, when we started Tanex, we said, listen, the, the client must win first. We must give the client a great product at a very mm-hmm. low fee. Uh, and if we do that successfully and we build enough clients, we will have a good business over time. So it wasn't as though, let's make money for ourselves and mm-hmm. you know, if we do well, then we can afford to give the client bonuses and better returns down the line, which, means, which, which remarkably is what a lot of the life companies still do today. Yeah, but then you, this kind of business, it's a very long-term strategic business over time. You know, it's like you tend to realize the returns from the client perspective over time. And now, if I invest with you, how are you going to make sure that I feel that I'm making progress? In a, yeah, in a it's a great right? point. I mean, you are exactly, point of time. you know, so, 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 you know, I say to people that, uh, 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 you know, in, we, we've been going for 10 years. So people have been with us for 10 years can start to compare, you know, yeah. the other investments, which they are doing. Uh, and they can see the, the, not in every case, but in certainly 80, at least 80% of cases, people will do better with us. Not because we're smarter, just because we have a single strategy. So we don't have all the complexity and the chopping, the changing and the underperforming fund managed in the high fees. So 80, at least 80% of the time, people will do better with us. And I think over time, that number will go up beyond 90%. Um, so you're right to say that in 20 years, people will mm-hmm. go, wow, this was a great company. But as right. you say, they're only gonna, you know, if I'm saving for my retirement, it's only kind of when I retire, will I know how well I've done. And in between, how will I know I'm do better? So at 10X, we, um, you know, we focus on what we call a wow customer experience is really engaging with people. So we have a direct model, rather than talking to an advisor, you talk directly to 10X. 
Uh, we're very simple, we're transparent, uh, we answer questions directly, uh, we, we use a lot of automation. So for example, if you want to sign up at 10X, uh, you can do that all online. You can upload your FICA documents online. You can e-signature. Mm. Uh, we have uh, very easy access to information through a web portal. Uh, you can get your investment balance uh, online, you can get all of your fees online, you can do retirement planning online. Uh, so we, you know, we try and engage people and have high customer service because as you say, uh, you know, most of uh, your experience is not really on the investment side. It's well, mm. you know, uh, can I get my investment balance? Can I get right. an investment report? How am I doing? You know, uh, how's the economy doing? So, so we do try and focus uh, uh, a lot on that and I think using technology and simplicity our customers have a far better experience because as I said earlier most people have got no idea where their money is or even the investment balance. So retirement feels like you know uh, like the status quo is more like oh you just put your money somewhere and you forget about it you know so for a lot of people that's the experience they get. I get deducted like three percent of my salary it goes into my retirement and that's it. And then the, you never check or anything like that, you know. So they get no financial statements. Uh, I mean, not even a clue of what's happening. That's right. You know, I had I had uh, uh, some professionals one of, uh, from one of the big accounting firms mm. uh, here the other day, and they were talking about you know our model and blah blah blah. Uh, you know, and they were supposedly retirement fund experts. I said, okay, you with this this other company, this big company. I said, let's, let's both go online and look at our retirement funds. Mm. So they said, so there were two of them. The one said, I don't know how to go online. I don't know what my password is. I said, but what do you mean? Mm. I said, no, I've never looked online. I wouldn't even know where to find the information. So right. these, are, these, these are professionals that are actually supposed to be in the kind of corporate finance advisory yes. space. They didn't even know about their own retirement funds. Um, you know, another one said, well, I have been on, but I can't find any information. Now with 10X, uh, you go online, uh, your ID is your password, mm -hmm. which most people should know. You get a one-time uh, PIN, so it's authenticated with the same level of bank security, and you're online immediately, and right. you can see every transaction. <clears throat> and it was like, it was like, you know, we're in the 21st century because mm -hmm. everything's at your fingertips. It's all, you know, it's digital. It's on your smartphone, easy right. to see. You know, and they're living in the dark ages. They don't even know where their retirement fund is. <laughs> and as you say, I mean, it's like. You know, can you imagine if uh, you know you said to a cell phone company or anyone else, "Listen, here's my bank account details. Just charge me whatever you think." Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, can you imagine how abused you would be? Yeah, yes, yeah. For the retirement fund industry, that's exactly what's happening, and people are wondering why they're being abused. Most of the time, they don't know they're abused until you yeah. know, the very end. So, with the vision that you had here, I mean, now you say you have eighty plus employees. What are, what are, what is everyone doing here um, on an everyday basis? Uh, so. When we started off 10X, uh, we, we started off in the corporate market, the corporate retirement funds. And the mm. reason for that is that uh, you know, we've got a very different model, as I said, rather than giving people lots of options. Mm. So every other company's got lots of options and you know, they sell the best performing option because every year you know, it could be growth, value, technology, rand hedge, mm. resources, whatever. Uh, so, so they're very much salesman driven. They, they're driven by lots of products. Uh, I'm only going to market the best performing ones. I'm going to ignore the bad ones and then I'm going to use advisors and intermediaries to sell uh, these complex products mm -hmm. with high fees to our clients. So we said, no, 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 that's, that isn't what 10X was for. 10X was about helping people do better, and the way we do that is a single strategy. It changes by your time horizon, but a single strategy, low-cost index funds, cut out all the fees, including distribution and uh, commissions and uh, like, uh, broker fees. Uh, so to start that 10 years ago in the individual market would have been too difficult because you need a lot of money to build the brain, especially for retirement, where most people are not that interested in retirement until they're in their 40s or their, their, their 50s. So we went into the corporate space. So to cut a long story short, we, we started off as what's called an employee benefit uh, administration and investment management company. So we had to have the infrastructure and the people to manage companies, because we look after some large companies. We look after, for example, you know, African Bank, Deutsche Bank, Virgin Active, uh, Isuzu, uh, EOH, lots of you know, sizable companies. Right. So part of our business is managing corporate pension funds and the administration that goes with that. Uh, and then part of the business is about uh, 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 individuals. So we also have individual retirement products and unit trusts. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have uh, consultants that, uh, that engage with uh, customers, both corporate and retail. Uh, and we have administration and we have all the support services that go around it. So it's a regulated industry. There's lots of uh, uh, 
there's kind of a sizable fixed cost base to get in the industry. Mm-hmm. You know, to have the licenses and the compliance and the fund accounting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that's why you see all the people here. <laughs> And then the the goal is to scale it up because as you grow the business, you don't have to add that many new people and you can use technology right. and you can benefit from economies of scale. Right. And another thing that is interesting to me is, so you have the company now running uh, full time. What are the things that I think, yeah, for you as a CEO of the company now and you started the company, what are the things that you invest in and why? When I invest, what you mean? My timing? Or? Yeah, I'm um, as a company. So when you accumulate the capital, like where do you put the money in? Okay, so so our main objective is to grow and okay. to build a strong brand mm. and to build a large, loyal, and uh, happy customer base. Uh, so there is a cliche, which sadly is true, in the investment industry or the retirement industry, which says these are products that are sold and not bought. Mm-hmm. So no one walks into Old Mutual or Sunlum or Liberty or Coronation and says, you know, I want your product. Yeah. Uh, so so we, uh, we believe that bad products are sold, good products are bought. Mm-hmm. But you have to change behavior because as we've been discussing, most people are apathetic, disengaged, and they don't really know what's going on. Yeah. So we want to change that around from uh, people not caring and being reactive mm. and disempowered to caring, proactive right. and empowered. Yeah. So that's about building a brand. So a lot of the, the, the work we do is around brand building, is around uh, uh, education, PR, mm. uh, advertising, uh, writing blogs, etc. Mm. Uh, we did, uh, you may have seen with uh, Nick Rabinovitz and Sivan Gessi, we've done some Facebook uh, campaigns. And we, put, we did four Facebook campaigns over like these candid camera situations uh, and we got over a million views in each of those. Okay. And the reason for that is that, uh, you know, it's a boring topic. <laughs> it's a low interest category. So to get people interested, you have to make it humorous and entertaining. Yep. So, you know, those are the kind of things we spend a lot of our time thinking about is how can we reach more people? How can we get more people to think about something that is so important to them? But it's a low priority until until it's too late. So, but then, my um, what I wonder is when you an, an investment company like this, where do you invest the money itself? When you oh, where do we oh yeah. our client portfolios? Yes. Okay. Well, well, you know, the secret of investing is that there is no secret. Okay. okay. We all invest in the same place. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so although there are one thousand six hundred unit trusts in South Africa, that's all part of the salesmanship part of the industry, not the stewardship. Right. We all we all invest in the same place. So if you look at our high equity fund or Alan Gray's balance fund or Old Mutual's balance fund or anyone's balance fund, mm. we're actually very, very similar. So, you know, we invest up to seventy five percent in shares. So that's between local and international shares. Mm-hmm. So for example at Tanex we have fifty percent in the South African stock market and about twenty two percent in global equity markets. So you've got about seventy two percent uh, in equities and we have another 5% in property. So you've got about almost 80% in what we call growth assets. Mm-hmm. And as I say, if you look at all the big companies, you know, we're not that different. You know, it might vary by one or two percent and mm-hmm. we may have a little bit less NASPES or a little bit more uh, uh, Anglo-American or Billiton or Richmond or whatever, but, right. uh, but it's marginal, it's marginal. Um, so we all invest in the same place. I mean, that's one of the cons of this industry is that they're all different. You know, we're all so unique. And uh, if I had to show you a chart of our performance over, uh, it's now over 10 years. So we've been going for, this is our 11th year. If I show you our performance against the average large fund manager, I'll show you a line. Uh, we all go up at the same time and we all go down at the same time. Yes, we may go up slightly more or less than them. Uh, but uh, over the last 10 and a half years, we have gone up before fees, we've gone mm-hmm. up more than that. But okay. it's not, it's not, I mean, the, the long-term impact is significant, but you can see the lines kind of go up and down at the same time. Right. Uh, and if you take the fee saving afterwards, then we, you know, we're a lot better after fees uh, than the vast majority of fund managers. But the point being is that uh, you have to distinguish the salesmanship side of the industry, which sadly dominates mm-hmm. with 1,600 different unit trusts, but uh, there's only really three different ways to invest, which is when you're a long-term investor, you own what's called the balanced fund. So you have some shares, property, bonds, you have different asset classes. So you don't have everything in the SA stock market. You have it in global markets, in local markets, in bonds, property, cash, 
uh, etc. It's well diversified. So once you get that right, which is the 101 of investing. Would, would you recommend that at a personal level as definitely, well? Definitely, yeah. Diversification. Right. Diversification. If you, if you look at uh, South Africa, we have something called uh, Regulation 28. That if, you, if you're in a retirement fund, so the main reason you're in a retirement fund is that you get tax-free contributions. So this right. the, the tax advantages. So if you elect to go that route, which most people do with retirement, then there's certain rules that you can't have more than 75% in shares. That's the maximum you can have. So what should you do? You could get very close to 75% because in the long run, shares do better than bonds, mm -hmm. uh, cash and property. Uh, so as I say, all the, all the portfolios are very similar. Uh, it's like it's like going into a supermarket and uh, I don't know, let's say this brown bread you want to buy. Mm -hmm. You kind of go, well, you know, and someone says, well, we use, you know, 37.5% of grain and our competitors use 35.8. You know what I mean? It's, who cares? I mean, yeah. you, you wouldn't know the difference, but you'd see 1,600 different uh, uh, products of bread. You go, yeah, what's yeah. going on over here? <laughs> you know, and they'd say, well, you know, Mike Tyson uses this one, and yeah. Usain Bolt uses this one, and, you know, Roger Federer uses... Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's all, not a marketing ploy. It's all marketing. It's completely... Yeah. You know, we all... All the money goes to the same place. Mm -hmm. We all own the same shares. Uh, so it's a... It's a... You know, it's part of the illusion that there's some magic over there. There's some magic. And lastly, before I waste too much of your time, um, w one of the, some of the listeners on, on my podcast say they should ask, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency market? Well, they're probably going to be disappointed. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm not a, well, I, I guess it depends on, I mean, from an investment perspective, I don't see, I don't understand the investment logic behind Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the, listen, the fundamental pr premise of any investment is to understand it, okay? Because any any investment or asset, uh, the the current value, the intrinsic value, is the value of the future income stream you will get out of it, okay? So if I buy, if I invest in the stock market, what do I get? I get the dividends. Mm -hmm. from companies over time and I get growth in earnings and dividends. So I know what I'm buying. You know, I can say, well, Coca-Cola is this and, you know, mm -hmm. Anglo-American is that and, you know, uh, if I buy property, I get a rental income. So, so, so any asset is the, uh, you know, you, you try and look at the future stream of uh, income or revenue you get out of it and you discount that and you make some kind of assessment of, you know, what is, what is this worth? versus what am I paying for it? Yes. Because it could be a great business, but if you, you know, for example, Google, we know, and Amazon yeah. are unbelievable businesses, but whether they're unbelievable investments at this price, we don't know because, you know, it's factoring in some very high growth. Right. Okay, so there's a difference between between the the price that I can get something at and the value. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, uh, I mean, I get that, uh, that there are many, many weaknesses in the financial system and there are many, mm -hmm. many weaknesses in the monetary policy, and the credit worthiness of countries, I'm gonna get all of that. Uh, how this is a better alternative to that, uh, I don't get yet. Uh, and uh, how you can make money, uh, how, this, how this currency becomes so much more valuable uh, overnight and go up and down, all over, I, I don't get it. So I don't understand the present value of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of this. Uh, so my view has been for a long time that uh, I never invest in things I don't understand to right. me. And I think sadly, people only invest in it because they want to get rich quick. Right. You know, it's our human nature of greed. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you really understand what's going on, good luck. Uh, if you don't understand, don't invest. And uh, you know, sadly, uh, you know, we're driven by more by our emotions and our logic. Right. You know, most of us, even you know, I like to think I'm logical, but but uh, often our, 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 our either our greed or our fear takes over. Right. So I would say to your listeners, uh, you know, don't be too greedy. Uh, make sure you understand, you know, anything that you can get rich quickly that you don't understand, mm -hmm. you know, you can also get poor quickly. quickly. There's, a, there's, a, there's a good saying that, it's a Wall Street saying that, uh, you know, what the smart do in the beginning, the dumb do in the end. Oh. <laughs> okay, who, who came up with that? So what's the saying? I don't know who came up with it. But, uh, <laughs> All right, thanks so much for your time. Eh? It's my pleasure, nice chatting. Awesome. Hello once again and that was the end of our conversation and just before you go just want to communicate a few things with you uh, quickly if you have uh, enjoyed any of the podcast or this specific podcast episode I would appreciate it if you share it with your friends and family through your social media Twitter Facebook 
etc etc as well as write me a five star review on itunes or apple podcast app that would be fantastic it helps me flourish and sustain this podcast as well uh, we also on other platforms like soundcloud uh, stitcher radio um, and all other major podcast platforms. So whichever way you're listening to it, I would appreciate it if you leave me a review. You can also subscribe to The Grey Podcast through my website, greyjabesi.com, G-R-E-Y-J-A-B-E-S-I.com. There you also find some of the blogs that I'm writing sometimes, and you get notified as soon as the new episode has been published. Until next time, enjoy and be productive.